Surrey is a condition where people need food, clothing, and shelter. But not many people have enough money to get those things because of their family or because of their job. Poverty can also affect children with uh, child development, which is like they could they could grow up with poor health health behaviors and choices, and are more more susceptible to mental illnesses as they grow older. Poverty also has a factor in crime. Youngs are more likely to participate in violent actions or in crime if they live in like in a low house income, or if they have like no food or anything, like they don't have shelter or anything because they want to achieve that. So it gives them motivation to do something else. Poverty can also uh, come with low social mobility, which means that uh, the child can grow up to be more poor, even twice as poor as their parents. Because many adults lived in poverty, they don't fulfill up to their social expectations, which means that they don't contribute as much to the economy as they need to, which like stops the progression of our economy. It basically keeps like the, the rich getting richer and the poor getting richer. So my name is Dulce Alcazar and I'm a sophomore at Leadership, Leadership Public High School. My name is Carlos Hernandez and I'm a junior here. So what we're going to do, so we're going we're gonna to live on $2 a day for three days and each day we, cannot, we can't get anything else, like any food from anybody, only with our money that we use. We've, we've also gone to interview people who help at a food pantry, who help people uh, in poverty or in it is important to know about poverty because if not, like you'll just be living uh, without knowing about what people go through, like through their everyday lives, and also you don't know who's actually going through it. Like you, you can't just tell that somebody's going through poverty, but it's good to know because like you could also help people. It's also important to me because many of us are impacted, and there's many people who want to live out of poverty, but they don't have the enough resources or their ed education or anybody that can help them. So maybe this documentary can help them out and motivate people to help other people out. Hey, so last night I went to the store with my two dollars and I bought two cup noodles. And so I ate one this morning and I'm gonna eat another one tonight. And I don't know, I just feel like it's gonna be like a long period from now to later at night when I eat it. So I'm, I feel like I'm gonna get pretty hungry later, especially to school right now and then when I get home. And um, my plan is just basically to drink water for the rest of the day until I get to eat my cup noodles and be so happy. Okay, so for day two, what I decided to do was that instead of just eating cup noodles, I got cup noodles and uh, <clears throat> an Easy Mac. I think that that's gonna be better because it'll be like my body getting different types of meals, not just cup noodles. Yeah. Okay, so today's my third day. I feel like kind of relieved because it's like tomorrow I'm gonna get to feast. But today I'm like really hungry and I haven't ate anything. And usually I eat breakfast, but today I didn't again. So basically what I've been doing is just drinking a lot of water to kind of keep my stomach oh. with something. Oh. Yeah, but um. Yeah, later later in the afternoon, probably after school, I'm gonna eat my cup noodles. And yeah, it's basically it, just cup noodles and water for me. Okay, uh, how do you feel? Well, I feel I feel really hungry, but like, it it's it's hard. But then again, like, I just try not to think about it and like get distracted with school anyway, so. Did it, does it affect you in like your schoolwork? Uh, it, <clears throat> I feel like it affects me like a tiny bit, but then like again like like I said I just try to like focus on that and like I ate the cup noodles last night so I still have like that energy anyways. Okay, so this is my first day and I haven't eaten anything. Today's um Monday and I chose today because if I choose to eat on on another day like on a weekend, I know that I'm gonna be tempted to eat, and if I like choose um, a school day, I'm gonna be busy the whole day, so I'm not gonna be as tempted. Um, so I'm in second period, and 
I'm kind of hungry, not that, not really, because I'm not used to eating in the morning anyways. So yeah, I'm planning to go to a little liquor store after school and probably get like, I don't know, a couple noodles or something. Yeah. So it's after school and I haven't eaten anything and I'm gonna go home right now. But before that, I'm gonna go to the store. I'm probably gonna get like a couple noodles because I don't think it's that like expensive and I only have $2 so I'm going to do that. And yeah, I'm pretty hungry though. Um, Throughout the day, I was like so tempted because all of my friends had food, but I didn't really have any food. But I mean, it's pretty hard because, like, in class, I was like starving, so I felt kind of weird. And I, I kind of like, I was kind of like in a bad mood because I wasn't eating. And yeah. So, this is my day two, and I haven't eaten anything yet. Um, I'm kind of hungry. Well, very Did you eat anything for breakfast? No, I didn't have anything to eat. I mean, because I don't really usually, I don't usually eat breakfast anyway, so it doesn't really affect me. But I'm a little hungry because yesterday I didn't eat that much because of the couple noodles. So, so yeah. what time are you gonna eat at today? So I'm gonna eat in lunch. Um, I'm gonna eat like one cup of noodles and then the little soda thing, and then for dinner I'm gonna do the same. Okay, so this is day like three and I kind of feel drained. I don't have that much energy because like yesterday I only ate like two cups of noodles and today I have to eat the same thing and I kind of don't like it. That sucks because I really can't afford anything else. Um, I feel once again drained. Like I have like no energy to do anything and I'm at school. So I don't know how that's going to work out. Like I don't eat in the morning so it doesn't like, it isn't as affecting. But like in the afternoon, like, I don't have any motivation to do homework because I don't have that much energy. And today, I'm just just waiting so that I can eat tomorrow because it's my last day. I don't know how people can do this because it's really tiring and exhausting. And I don't really like what I'm eating, but I have to eat it because that's the only thing I can eat. So, yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Hernandez from Leadership Public Schools. I was wondering, because I'm doing a project, uh, and I was wondering if I could go uh, into a shelter to ask some questions to people and uh, interview them. Uh, call me back at 510-246-6813. Thank you. Hello, this is Carlos Fernandez. I'm a student at Leadership Public Schools, Hayward. And I was wondering if, uh, because I'm doing a project for my, my school, and I was wondering if I could go over to, to like the soup kitchen so I could interview some of, the, uh, some of the, the workers there and ask them about what they do and how they feel about that. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Uh, this is Carlos Hernandez. Uh, we spoke before through voicemail, kind of. Hi, say again. Uh, this is Carlos Hernandez from Leadership Public Schools, Hayward. Oh, hey there. How's it going? Yeah, hi. I was going to try and look up the message and see if I can get you right back. Yeah, hey. Um, so, uh, I was wondering if I could go over to uh, Eden INR with um, my, my project partner. So we could interview some people basically to, um, <clears throat> we have some questions set up because we're making like a, a short documentary for our project at school. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we, what's, what's the focus on your project? Uh, poverty. Yeah, on <clears throat> poverty. Okay. So, um, because you know, I happen to be a specific person to Eden INR, I happen to be the disaster preparedness coordinator. Yeah. I do, I do disaster preparedness trains, which is great, but I, I, you kind of sounded like from the message when you're saying now you're looking for a broader picture than just disasters. Would that, would that be true? Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, kind of, but 
I was just looking to see if we would be able to go and interview some of the people up there. Great, great. Okay, that's why I thought. I, I didn't want to start talking to other folks until I had a chance to verify that, though. Because yeah. you want to talk to people who are more than just me, then. Oh, yeah, so yeah. What gonna, so what I'm going to do um, is I need to actually talk to our deputy director, because I'm not the person who gets to make those decisions. Yeah. But um, hang on one second. So I want to see if I... Hold on, hold on. Bear with me here. Person or just a few seconds. It's just, okay. it's just some simple yeah questions, and we just want to like uh, record it, record it because we're kind of for our project. We're kind of making like uh, a like a short film about it, like raising okay. awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, can you just show up we we have our pantry every Thursday night. The pantry actually starts at 6 o'clock, well, like quarter to 6, so I want you to be done by then, because we need our volunteers to be working. That's what I'm trying to figure out, is when you can do it so that we're not losing somebody who has something to do. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So, so I would think the, the earlier you can come, the better, like maybe uh, 4.30, 4.30 and, uh, and, then when, and the, then when the volunteers start, start arriving, that would be probably the best time to do it because before they get fully involved in their job. Yeah. And then, um, you know, you should do the first few that come and then they can get to work after you're done and then you can interview them and some other people. How many people are you talking about interviewing? Um, just a few, about, like three or five. Twenty. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so yeah. we have about 20 to 25 volunteers that come every time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so do you know where we are? Uh, yeah, I have your address right here. It says San, okay. San Leandro. Uh, well, actually, no. Yeah. It's the Bethel Community Church Pantry, right? Yeah. Okay. It's one, it's at 14235 Can you repeat that real quick? One four two three five Bancroft Avenue. Just right Street Hill Jefferson Elementary School. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Okay, so are you coming? Did you think, or you're not sure? Um, I'm not sure. Most likely. But <laughs> most likely, yes. So th it's every Thursday night, right? And we we would show up yeah. by by four thirty ish, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, sounds great. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Mm, bye. Uh, roughly, it, it depends, but roughly it's around 250 to 260 people. We get um, handicapped and disabled folks in wheelchairs. They go in first, and then after that, we have a line. It, go, it goes by a numbered system and go up to uh, 80, and then after that, it's everybody else goes on that line. So roughly around 250 to 340. How does uh, the pantry help people on the side we provide food that otherwise they would not have, so it helps them live. Yeah. Um, around how many people do you guys get on average? We get between 200 and 250 each week. Do you get um, like people who have families or kids who come here as well? Both, yeah, we, all, we get all of them. We have about 130 homeless people signed up. And we have a total of about 600 people on our average, on our open rolls. So we have people with kids, single people, grandparents, everything. How has working here uh, affected you uh, outside and right here? It affected me uh, a lot because I need to come here just, just because, it may, not to the point that everybody says it makes you feel better, but it's something that I'm contributing to the community. 
I'm assisting with them, I'm helping them out, and also too, I'm also a person that's in need as well. So, uh, and I just, I, for myself personally, I hate to receive something and not give something back. That's just for me. So that's, that's why I'm here and I do it. You know, I enjoy it because I get to meet a lot of people. They know me by first name now. And, uh, and when I see them, they're smiling and they're all happy. Oh, do you want one banana? Do you want do a couple oranges? And oh, no, it's fine. And they're so happy, to, you know, because they have some groceries. They can go home and eat, you know, so it's pretty good. How do you think that, that this soup kitchen affects people? It's not a soup kitchen. It's oh, a food pantry. Yeah, How does the pantry affect you? It helps. It helps their keeping their stomachs full. Being it's better than not having food at all. Yeah. Around how many people do you think come here to get food? How many do I think? I yeah. know. How many? We average between two twenty and two sixty okay. every week. How has working here affected you? Um. I appreciate more of the little things and don't look at people so critically. Um, you should look at the good things in life, whether they're good or bad. They, there's always a positive side. Uh, what factors motivate you to keep working here? And here? I'm a member of the church and I like the people and I enjoy interacting with our, our clients. Our clients are okay. A lot of fun sometimes. <laughs> okay, and yeah, that's it. For that. Thank you. Thank you. Have, have there any? Have there been any like hard or difficult situations here? Um, let me see. Hard and difficult situations. No, they haven't. No, uh, we haven't had no issue or anything. I think it's because there's different people from different areas, scope of life, of, uh, living. Uh, I get, and what's happening is that uh, different races and so forth, we're all in a common area right now. Everybody, regardless of where they're coming from, everybody's in that same need, the need of food. So it's, it's very common. We don't have anything that, that, that's, um, that's uh, you know, that we can say it's something you know, that's going to cause attention to it. Yeah. How is working here affected you? Uh, it's kept me busy. <laughs> I'm here uh, all day Thursday, and then usually parts of other days because my name's in the uh, on the internet to, to contact about food. So if people have food to donate or they want to get food when it's not in the pantry, they call me. So it's it's kept me busy. Uh, what factors motivate you to keep working here, helping? Uh, like the clients, like the volunteers. It's like a family now, volunteers helping people. So we like to see the same people every week. Uh, I'm going to add one more. Um, what does it take for people to like sign up and come here? They just have to sign up. They just have to come here and sign up. There's no requirement for residency or income level or anything like that. You just come and sign up. And if you're willing to come and sign up, we'll give you food. So what age range would you say? Age range, that's a good question. Um, it's, it's, it's probably in their uh, 40s to maybe their 60s or 70s. Uh, I see a lot of that. I've, I've recently seen a little more younger than that in their 20s. And these are ladies that are probably pregnant, have a couple of children, that kind of thing. I've been seeing that a little bit more. But not as much, but the, usually in the 40s, 40s and up. And up. <clears throat> I'll add to that a question. Um, how do you think, like, the like, little children get affected by this? The children, uh, how they get affected, um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that they don't, I don't really see in their faces that they are getting affected. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think they see it as like a grocery store and they come in and then they come in and they go through the whole thing with their families and they're, they're having a good time because that towards the end, the ladies here give them either a little treat like we have down there, you know, some, uh, uh, some bunnies, some bunny candies. So we give those out, and they're happy to get that at the end. So I don't think they really notice what's going on because it, the, during the, during the whole thing, it's almost like shopping, like if you're going to a grocery store. Um, how do you think that the soup kitchen affects people? I think it's a really good thing. It makes a big difference in people's lives, and I know it boosts. I do. Um, I provide uh, assistance, in-home health support, and two of the people that I have. 
provided assistance to that I've worked for come here because their money is so, so tight that it makes a big difference. And that's why I started coming here. Um, um, how has um, working here affected you personally? Um, the couple of times I've done it, it's been a positive experience. Oh, okay. <laughs> so how do the people that come in the soup kitchen, how do you feel they get affected? How do they get affected? I think if anything, if we didn't exist, um, I don't think they would have any, any place to go as far as um, food is concerned. Um, let's see, uh, they get affected because and there's some place for them to go to get something to eat, you know, because there is, I mean, there's, it's rare, uh, that we got only like a few places here in Hayward, but not too many places. But um, like, I, like I said, this is a good thing because it's here and it's provided. If they wouldn't have nothing here, there would be a lot of people that would be really hungry out in the streets. So how do you think that living on $2 a day would affect you if it was a daily thing? Well, I think it would have like a dramatic impact on like my daily life as well. Uh, for one, uh, I probably wouldn't be eating like as healthy as I could, especially with like, since you have to buy like cheaper types of food, uh, which aren't that healthy, and you're also eating a lot less. So I think uh, my life would change like a lot physically and also mentally, but I could see how uh, people adapt to get used to it. What do you think is the worst part of living in poverty? Um, I think the worst part, about, well, I actually haven't experienced it other than this challenge uh, with eating on two dollars a day. But um, from what I've like learned from watching documentaries and just seeing people like go through it as well, um, I think the hardest part is probably like, especially if you have a, a family, uh, because I can tell how it's like really hard on the on the parents. How do you think that living on two dollars a day for the rest of your life would affect you? Well, I think that it would affect me like a lot because just with one day, like I kind of felt bad throughout the day because like I was like super moody and like kind of mean. Like I was like super hungry as well. I think that it would affect me like in my school as well because I didn't concentrate as much as I would if it was like a day where I could eat whatever I want. I think that. Like, it would also, like, impact my health because I would kind of, like, at the end of the day, I kind of felt, like, nauseous. Like, my stomach was hurting a lot. And I think that it was probably because of the food I ate and I was, like, only, like, soup, I guess. But, yeah. So, how did this project affect how you see poverty to how you used to see it before? Okay, so, um, before I saw poverty, like, I thought it was, like, uh, it being, like, extremely, extremely poor. But what I what I came to realize was that uh, poverty could could be any like any type of like uh, financial situation. Like uh, you don't have to be extremely poor to be in poverty. Because uh, throughout this project, we met a lot of people that were were in some uh, some type of poverty. How does this project affect how you see poverty now and how you saw it before? So like before the project. I really didn't understand the definition of poverty, but now I see that poverty doesn't mean like you don't have any money. It means you're living under like what you're supposed to have, like in order to live and have like a good life, I guess. Like you live under the line of like how much you make a year or something. And I feel like this project has really made me become aware of that and has helped me like see that many people like the people you may know might be in poverty, but you don't know because they don't tell you, you don't can't really tell because they could still have clothing, they could still have like a job, but they still might not have enough money. And that's kind of like the whole thing of poverty. So how would you apply this knowledge into your life? I'm gonna apply this knowledge into my life by like educating people about it, but also like me, my like knowing about it when I see uh, or think I see somebody in poverty by, by not being judgmental about it because like what I've learned is that there's not a specific reason that people go into poverty. It's kind of like just things happen in life. There could be different things that happen to a person in their life and that could start the spiral down into poverty. And it's really hard to get out of it for some people, especially since, um, since a lot of people don't know about it. 
they, they won't be able to help. And a lot of times also people don't reach out for help because they're, they might be embarrassed of like admitting they're in poverty or something like that. So I think by educating people about it so they know how to help. What's something you observed throughout the project? So throughout the project, I saw that there's like a lot of people who are in poverty, not because they want to, but because they are, like they're forced to be. I see that many people have multiple jobs trying to like get out of poverty, but it's really hard for them because they have like minimum wage and like they don't have enough, like they don't, they either don't have like the education or they don't have like the like resources to do so. And I think that's really sad as well. I noticed that when we were doing the social experiment, we were like living on $2 a day for like three days. I saw that um, that many of the food that we were like, we had option to buy because we didn't have that, like, they were really like restricted and limited. Limited. I saw that many, uh, much of the food was like very unhealthy. Like we only, we were only able to get soups. And I saw that the food was very unhealthy and they, it was either very, it had a lot of like, uh, sugar or it had a, like a lot of carbs and i feel that that's kind of like pushing us to like not only to live in poverty but to be obese and that's another like another big thing that's happening because we're being very unhealthy and that that's not going to help our situation any better so it's kind of pushing those people who are already in poverty into something other like something greater than that and i think that that's really unfair because that's that's literally the only thing they can eat and it's kind of sad what are things you saw throughout this project? Um, something that I observed when we went to the food pantry was that the people they're helping when we interviewed them or talked to them, uh, they were really, like, a lot of them were really happy to be there helping. And this was because some of them have been or are in this, those type of situations with poverty as well. So uh, they knew where all the people were coming from and, like, they're a really close community, especially when, when someone's new new there, they accept them right right away and then they, they make them feel welcome. And I thought, I thought that was really nice that they were being a community together because they all know where they're coming from and their struggles and stuff. So one way you could help would be donating. So you can you can donate to many companies that help out people in poverty. You can help out by donating toys, food, clothing, furniture, stuff like that to companies that support people who need who are in need, as well as donating money to those companies as well because the the overall message and the overall purpose of them is to help out people who are in need, and that's what we're trying to do. Another way you could help. Uh, with poverty is to, to be a volunteer. There's different ways to be a volunteer as well. You can help like at a, at a food pantry where you can just help like set up and give out food to people that come. Um, and by helping, like you, you actually feel good afterwards and while you're doing it as well because you know that like you're, you're helping something and you're helping them with their lives to continue their lives. And uh, a really cool way to also help uh, would be by by being a missionary abroad and that's like you go to a different country and you help out like people in need and stuff like that especially in developing countries but that can be really cool as well because you get to see a completely new country and just explore the different things about it while you're also helping people in need. You can always go and help fundraise. You can go to communities, you can go to organizations and help them out by um, fundraising things like you could help you could hold auctions and you could also sell things that it's always a good idea because you always raise up money for those people who are in need another way you could help people in poverty is by just meeting an individual like talking to them getting to know where they come from and a way that could be something that could be really impactful to them could be a haircut because that could like give them a boost in morality as well and like just make it easier for them to find a job and just by donating things to them as well. Like giving someone a dollar just could help them in that day as well.